Now tell me how many niggas, tell me how many niggas go around with a nigga like me, like me, like me, like me. Tell me how many bitches go around with a nigga like me. Now tell me how many. To my fire exposure over here with my guy Spado. Welcome to the couch. No, thanks for having me. You already know. Um, last time we sat down two years ago, you was home for about one month. Just about, yeah. I was one of the first people to get that interview, by the way, mm -hmm. for those that don't know. Um, since then, you have done a lot of things. Yeah. You put out the um, mixtape, well, the freestyle mixtape, was right. that like what goes by um, Cosmic Have. You did the Unchained mixtape. You did um, On Deck the label. Right. You got um, two signed artists. Mm -hmm. And you put out On Deck the album. Right. All right, so let's let's talk about the label. <clears throat> now, you know, what's your affiliation with the label? Is it your label? Are you partner with someone, or are you the face? Like, what's the situation? Break that down. I have two partners, uh, Ian Rich. We all childhood friends. We grew okay. up. We all grew up together. And they was they was here for me when I touched down, and uh, <clears throat> when I was inside, I used to you know talk to both of them. You know, what I mean, my brother Rez did a long stretch too. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I used to talk to both of them before I came down, before I came home. And he used to come see me, he used to sit and visit the room. And he's like, what you want to do, bro? And I was like, nah, you know, when I come home, I, I, it's not even about me. I want to I want to build a company and start a label. I want to give some other cats an opportunity. You know what I mean? And uh, he's like, well, how much you think it's going to cost? And I was like, well, X amount of dollars. Then when I came home, I said, listen, man, let's just do it together. You know what I mean? Let's, let's try to build something from the brand. I mean, I know I could have walked out the door and got a record deal. That wasn't... You know, that wasn't really what I was looking for. I really was just trying to build a brand and give give some other cats a shot. You know what I mean? So, on deck ain't just some fly-by-night situation. <laughs> on deck's a product of long nights laying in that bed, staring at the ceiling. Like, yo, what I'm going to do when I get home? You know what I mean? So. Okay. So, what made you um, pick Quilly and City? I mean, to be honest, like, I used to hear about Quill when I was up top. But, it, you know, it wasn't as much as I heard about... uh. Meek or Joey Jahad or Reed Dollars or, but I used to be like the undercurrent. Like I used to always say, man, it's the, it's the other boy, man, that, that, you know, this boy hot, but people don't ever give him his props. This kid Quilly Mills, da da da. Then I came home, I used to ask people, you know, even when I was in halfway house, the young boy was listening to him one day. I was like, who that right there? He was like, no, that's Quilly Mills. I'm telling you, he the boy, but he they sleep on him. And then when I got out, I used to ask people about him. And then you know, a lot of people had a lot of, had bad stuff to say about him. Mm -hmm. That made me more interested, because I'm like, yo, man. Why are, they, why are they talking bad about this book? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Then when I finally, you know, when I was recording the freestyles, I called, uh, I was at the back even, I was like, Rug, man, get in contact with the kid Quilly Mills, man. I, I want him on this joint. Then when I really got him down here and I got to talk to him, I said, man, you know, I like this kid. You know what I mean? Like, I don't draw judgments off what other people say about people. Like, when I got to meet him, I was like, I like this kid. And I was like, listen, we starting this thing on deck. Come on down. You mm -hmm. got all the time in the world, but you need some guidance. Come on down. This is what we're going to do. And right. that was that. Okay. What about City? <clears throat> City, I mean, <clears throat> a mutual friend of all of ours, uh, my man Khan, he brought the CD and gave it to gave it to my brother Reds. And Reds let me listen to it, and I was like, yo, man, this kid right here, like, where he from? He like, he from uptown. I was like, yo, this nigga sound like he from out of space. I was like, yo, this <laughs> I was like, this nigga right here is dope. I was like, this nigga is dope right here. I was like, where he at? They like, nah, he... He had work. I said, where the hell he work at? He was like, Pizza Hut. I was like, man, go get that nigga, man. He, get that nigga out of there, yo. Like, this nigga dope. Like, we need him because he was different than what we already had. Okay. He just sounded different, you know, and you're not going to, nobody's going to start a company pretending the same thing. You know what I'm saying? He was just different. And he mm -hmm. was the first cat I heard from here that sounded like that. So it was like a no-brainer. Right, right, right. So as far as females, <coughs> no females on the label right now. Are you interested in signing any females? We interested. We interested in signing dope artists. Okay. I don't care what they are, male, female, whatever. I don't care if you got a singing dog and be dope. Bring him on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We 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 interested in building a brand. Like we need dope artists. I don't care if they groups, individuals, male, female. We ain't, we just want dope. Right. Anybody you looking at right now? I mean, I, I speak to a lot of people, and uh, we're looking at everybody, you know what I'm saying? Okay. You know, but at the end of the day, this is the record business. We don't need people that can just rap and sing. We need people that can make records that right. we can sell. That's what we're looking for. Right. And the state of hip-hop, where is that right now? How do you feel 
um, coming from your era of music and today's era of music, how do you feel about it? I mean, at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's evolution to the game. Because the artists that came 15 years before us probably felt some type of way about what we was doing. You know what I mean? Right. So it's just it's just like evolution, man. It's it's a sign of the times. The music people make re is a reflection of the times. And this is music. I don't have no ill will. I'm not one of them guys like yo. These guys can't rap. They're not rapping. They're not doing this. Thing. I'm not. I'm not one of them type of guys. You know what I'm saying? If you do, you do. You know what I mean? So that's really how I feel about. It. I'm not. One of them old bitter niggas like, yo, they ain't rapping like us. You know what I mean? Right. But it's just it's just the reality of the game. And, and this era of the game is way more important to be marketable than it is to be talented. Okay. So, you know, people are just doing what they need to do to survive and find a niche. So I don't knock them. And some of them jokers is dope. You know what I mean? Right. You know, I like the records. I listen to them. You know what I mean? Do you? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah. So let's talk about um the on that album. Mm -hmm. Um, it's host by Don Cannon. Don Cannon. So it's an album, but you kind of treated it like a mixtape with a host. Yeah, because I mean, essentially, it was there's no difference anymore. Okay. There's no differences in mixtapes and albums. There's no difference now. Like it's just the fact that what people like to what they name them. Okay. I mean, essentially, what's the difference nowadays? Well. Free and sell them. <laughs> people, yeah, people well, I mean, well, I mean, you know, doing them free is just a, a fancy way of not having to clear samples. <laughs> That's it. You All right. Know. So how was it doing? It's doing well. It's doing great. You know, it's just, just it was, it was. We had a good time making it. Okay. I think it was just it showed uh, all of our different why we all different you know what i mean and that's what made it dope you know what i mean and it was just like we had fun making it because they made me do some things that i normally won't do and vice versa you know what i mean and that's like what rap on what like some track beats just different type of stuff that i normally be like ah that ain't for me that's a city like what would you say it's not for you give it elaborate on that the first the first song on uh sins i wouldn't i wouldn't have picked that beat for me okay i wouldn't like if somebody put that beat in front of me i was like ah so what's the beats that you like? I like heavy bass, nice drum patterns, some strings. I like making pain music. I like that slow flow where I can just bars. I'm not hiding behind the beat. You know what I'm okay. saying? I want you to hear what I'm saying. Right. Now you said when you came home that you could have jumped right and got a deal. As far as like deals right now, how do you feel about like a 360 deal or an independent? Like, how do you feel about it? I mean, at the end of the day, it's like people turn their noses up at 360 deals, but they really don't know the concept of a 360 deal. Like, you can, you may give whoever you sign a 360 deal with a percentage of everything that you're doing, but the percentage is negotiable. Mm -hmm. Like, people don't know at the end of the day, it's like, these why you seeing musicians and rap artists that look like me standing in front of the camera for Nike and Pepsi because they have 360 deals because these labels are going to make sure you get branding and you make money because they make money when you make money. Those types of things wasn't happening before. They're going to make sure you make money because they want to make money because they know they can't be dependent strictly on your record sales because there's too many ways to get free music now. No, but right. So. How do you how, how do you respond to the people that say, oh, we want the old speed back, or you know, or the new speed? I don't know about the new speed. Like, what do you have to say about that? I mean, you only can say that if you was around for the old speed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you if you actually didn't live that era, you don't know what the old speed was really like. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you don't really know the difference. Right. Like you know you was around. You know what I'm saying? But like with dude. 25, he's like, yo, I want the old shit. I'm like, yo, you was a kid when I went to jail. Like, you don't know what it was. And at the end of the day, these times are different. When I give them the old space over the head, you can't really, you can't rap like that anymore. You're going to go over people's heads. They don't, they don't understand it. Right. Okay. I ain't going to lie. One, of, one, of, one day, a young boy was like, he was talking about an artist. He was like, man, I don't really like him. I was like, why you don't like him? He dope. He's like, no, but... I don't be feeling like thinking sometimes. And I'm like, what? He's like, when I listen to him, he make me think, and I don't be feeling like thinking. And when he said that to me, I said, yeah, it's the world's different. <laughs> it's different, man. Nigga tell you he don't feel like thinking. I said, yeah, all right, man. Yeah. 
It is what it is. Okay. Would you say you fully adjusted to society right now for being locked away for 11 years? Uh, as much as you can be. <laughs> you know what I mean? Every day, every time I think I got to figure out something new comes along. You know what I mean? But I mean, it is what it is. I'm adapting. Okay, so how hard is it being in prison away from your family and different things like that? I mean, that's the the mental part of being in prison. I think uh, that's the part that goes understated. Mm -hmm. Like they always, even when you read books or you watch movies, they always talk about the violence and all of that. We grew up in the ghetto. We grew up around that crap. We used to be in the have-nots. We okay. used to fight and to survive. That's, that's nothing new to all of us. We used to be in around violence every day. That's nothing. It's the mental part. The aspect of every time you walk somewhere, you're hearing the door lock behind you. Or the aspect of, you know, not having a free will and, you know, being told when to eat, when to sleep, when to do this. and The people that you're forced to be around all day, every day. You know what I mean? That's the mental part that you don't get. So the best part of being in prison is, that, you know, what Jay-Z say, lock my body, can't trap my mind. I just used to keep myself free because at the end of the day, I was fortunate enough to know, no matter how steep the hill was, I knew it was a peak, you know what I mean, for me. I knew it was light at the end of the tunnel. So my thing mentally was to keep my mind outside of there, to make sure that when I got my shot, I was going to be, be prepared to not just get free, but to stay free. So every day, my mood was, what are, what are you doing to make sure when you get out there, you're ready? Okay. So that was my thing every day. When I woke up in the morning, I kept myself busy. I stayed away from shenanigans. You know what I'm saying? I did the same thing I do now. I went to work out. I went to work. I came in. I kept it pretty neutral. Like, I never ran around with a bunch of cats. I wasn't part of no cliques. I wasn't into none of that nonsense. You know what I'm saying? I, I kept it regular. I walked. Same way I am now, child. By myself, 90% of the time. Okay. I just moved around like that. I used to... You know, I didn't do things... People do things to keep their, to keep their minds incarcerated. They, or keep their minds on the wrong things. They sit and all they do is sit and watch videos all day. All they do is they want to read street novels and hood books and all that. And I don't knock those because it's supporting a lot of black authors that, you know, that's where they make the bulk of their money. So I never knock cats for doing that. But I just never was into reading fiction, fictional versions of my real life. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, why would I do that? So I did, I read the things that was going to put me in this success like I, 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 I used to read about the banking system and, and about stocks and the, you know the biography of Carnegie and the Rockefeller and you know I, I was into that type of stuff because it was just like these men were successful you know what I mean and it was just like you can't truly make currency until you know how it flows you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. and then I really realized why uh, we'd have nots you know what I'm saying okay. Like I really, that that really let me realize why we have not. And elaborate why. Uh, we we into instant gratification. Okay. We make investments that are quick flips, where other races they make their investments looking five or ten years down the line. You know what I mean? They 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 they're patient with their investments. We we're into instant gratification. We're gonna pick up breadcrumbs. And there's only two blocks to the bread factory. Mm -hmm. That's that's why we the have nots. Okay. Um, did you get into any fights or any I mean, trouble? I mean that stuff come with prison. You know what I mean? It's just that's the stuff. You know what I mean? When you go in there, people gonna try to sip your juice. You know what I mean? Your mm -hmm. name, you know, especially when you go in when you go in there with some type of a name, you mm -hmm. ain't just Oh, I was fighting dude from such and such. Oh, I'm the dude. I want that speed. You know what I mean? I want that speed. Like, that's how I go. So did it make um, it harder, being so that you had a name, so people want to, you know, come for the name? I mean, it didn't make it harder because I never carried myself like that. Okay. I never looked at myself like I was somebody more than the next dude, even when I was out here. I okay. never looked at I always was a regular guy with everybody. I always kept it regular. I always kept ten toes down, so... I didn't go in with that mentality. Even now, when people walk up on me and say, Hey, you're a legend, I'm like, Oh, man, thanks. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? But right. I, I don't be tripping on none of that. Where was your mind frame at, you know, 11 years ago when you went into prison? I was a junkie, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What drugs were you doing? I was getting high. I took I drunk syrup every day, took Xanaxes every day, smoked weed every day. You know, I was just out here. I, I thought I was living, but I was only out here existing. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was just. You know, I didn't realize how many opportunities in life I squandered until I was in prison and, you know, 
you you never looked at yourself in the mirror more in your life. You know what I'm saying? You never had more time to think in your life than being in prison. You get introspective and you start looking and you start understanding. You're like, damn, man, I squandered a lot. That's the only thing that used to keep me up at night, squandered opportunities. Uh -huh. Like, I didn't worry about all that other stuff. I didn't worry about what I was missing on the streets and all that. I, didn't, I knew that stuff was going to still be here when I got out here. I just, I thought about squandered opportunities, and I tossed and turned. The more I got around cats, and I'm like, yo, these dudes in here for the rest of their life, and they ain't never done or seen shit. Right. Like, y'all been around the world rapping. Like, I had a good life. I had a good opportunities, man, and I squandered them being a fool. All right. Fast forward, 11 years later, you came home, started the label, dropped the mixtapes, got some artists signed. Rolling around with Meek Mills in the city. What's your relationship currently with Meek? Nah, Meek good folks, man. Always nice. I look at him as a, as a, as a friend. You know what I mean? He, he my young. You know what I'm saying? He look at me like an OG, and I, uh, you know, I respect him, man. You know, you know the success that he's made himself. You know what I mean? Coming from here, you know what I mean? He worked hard. People act like somebody handed him something. Ain't nobody hand that boy nothing. He worked hard and he earned it, man. So you know, I wish the greatest success to him. That's dope. Um, right now, there's a lot of Philly beefs going on. You got PNB Rock, you got Dream Chases, you got OBH. You know, they like to compare the, um, the OBH situation, OBH and Dream Chases to the major figures in state property. Being as though that you had a prior beef, you know, you went through it, you went to jail, somebody lost their life. Any wisdom, any advice you want to give those guys so they don't go down that path? I mean, at the end of the day, man, just it ain't worth it. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, ain't been no bloodshed. Ain't nobody put, no, put their hands on each other. It's just, you know, just just leave it alone, man. There's no benefits in it. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, the artist's going to be all right. It's always usually somebody in the entourage that get hurt. You know what I mean? And then, you know, I'm a living, breathing example. You know what I'm saying? And you just, it, it ain't worth it. You know, I lost 11 years of my life over it. Essentially, he said, she said, because that's all it is. You know what I'm saying? Glorify, he said, she said. So it was just like, it's not necessary. Fortunately, you know, like, it's it's like blowing over some. You know what I mean? And I mean, the whole thing was, you know, everybody you just named, all of them do. And all of them got opportunity to, to do things for their family they can never imagine. You know what I mean? And it's like, don't squander that to, to, to do what? You know what I'm saying? People love to see a car crash. You know, people people love to brew up the storm, but then when it blow up, then everybody get on their soapbox. See, this was wrong with y'all. When they was the main antagonizers and the main instigators behind it. But when you brew a storm, when it rain, people get wet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't know how to, to, to squash them be friends like right. other artists from other cities. Right. We're not wired like that. Right. Like, we just fill it up like, fill it. we got a different mentality. You know, we're not wired like that. You know what I mean? And the whole thing is, it's not worth it. So before you even... Before you even start going down that mountain, at the point right now, just nip it in the butt. You know what I mean? Just nip that shit in the butt. It ain't worth it. Do you think you'll be able to come in um, as a medium for the the two camps to try to squash it, or do you just, like, I'm staying away from that? Nah, man, I'm tight with both sides, man, if they call on me. You know what I'm saying? Because I done mediated some things with people before. You know okay. what I'm saying? If they call on me, I won't have no problem doing it because I, I feel like that's a, a responsibility to me. One thing about my old, you know, the old age used to tell me in penitentiary, like, yo, nigga, you got a responsibility. Mm -hmm. You got responsibility to go out there and tell them niggas the truth. Right. Them niggas just rap about it and they just, you know, they ain't never really did it. Like, you mm -hmm. did it. Like, right. you got responsibility to tell them niggas the truth. I really play out. You know what I mean? And you blessed to get an opportunity. You blessed you ain't lose your life. Right. You know what I'm saying? You blessed that you, there's something on the end of the tunnel. Ain't no guarantee when you come to these penitentiaries uh, around trip. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, you got, a, you got an obligation to tell people what it, how it really is. Right. But you say um, going to jail, you know, a lot of young guys, they glorify a lot of negativity, shooting mm -hmm. up people, mm -hmm. a lot of crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when people come home from jail, it's like, oh, you went to jail, you ain't snitch, you a stand-up dude. Did you get a lot of more respect or people glorifying that? Well, I never glorified it. Mm -hmm. So even if they do, I feel as though I get a certain level of respect from what I earned before I went to prison because I feel as though I always was a stand-up dude. I don't think you should get a reward for not snitching. This is just the way it's supposed to be. Right. So, like, I don't think you should get a reward for that or be held in any type of esteem for doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I think I, I always got a certain level of respect because just how I always treated people with respect. 
Whoever mm-hmm. that was the CEO or the janitor, I treated them the same. You know what I mean? So I feel as though I got a certain level of respect because of how I always treated people. Right. So. Okay. So, still unchained. Is it done? Are we still working on it? It's done. Okay. It's done. Any features? I don't want to say it's done until it's in a package. Okay. Because if somebody come, if some some dope come about, I'm doing it. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm put it on there. You know what I mean? So. I still got some stuff in the work, so I don't want to close the book on it yet. I don't want okay. the documentary is done though. Okay. The documentary is done, and I, I, I essentially I got the outline made mostly for the records. Like I got 14, 15 dope records that I'm ready to run with. But if somebody come along and say, "Yo, speed, I want to get on this," ah, I'm gonna let them go ahead. So right. I ain't gonna never close the book. I learned that never close the book until it's in the in the plastic. Okay. So when can we expect it? Um, fourth quarter, first quarter. I really wanted to third do- quarter. I wanted right to, I want, I really wanted to do it in September, but it's just like, it just, just something wasn't, wasn't right. You know what I mean? Just, it just didn't feel good. Okay. So I like, I want to do it when it feels good, and I want to do it when it feels right. But it's definitely gonna be about it before the end of the year, cause it's, it's done. So. Okay, so it's you're right in like fourth quarter then. Yeah, just okay. to be on the safe side. Yeah. Okay. Um, any features with people that we know? Well, you know, I got the obvious. You know what I'm saying? I got. You know, I got Quilly, you know, my own deck family. I got Big Oo on there. I got Ab Live on there. Uh, Any other towners? I'm, 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 me and, me and, me and Murder Move got some stuff in the works shout that we're Mook. working on. Yeah, shout out to Y'all did my show together, right? No, that's my dude, man. <laughs> me and Mook go, me and Mook go way, 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 way back. You okay. know what I'm saying? I got some other people in the works. I don't want to start spewing names until I can lock, stock, and barrel and they like, all right, come on down. But you know, a couple people like, no, nah, speed, I got you. So, you know, we'll see. Now, what do people have to say about the shooter song you did with Chief Keith? What did they have to say about his verse that you did? I mean, the only thing about it, these <laughs> kids love him. Like, okay. they love him. I have to be brutally honest. I understand what goddamn word he said. He, me either. <laughs> but, hey, man, people love... That was one of the favorite records off the mixtape. Yeah, kids, I was going to say, would that be your strongest song? These kids these kids love him. They, lo- they love him. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know, I appreciate the fact that he did it. You know what I'm saying? So it was, a, it was, it's a big artist that called for GQ, and he was like, "Nah, I ain't doing nothing." Right. And he, he wasn't no rap. He's like, "Oh, gotcha." Right, right, he right. Sent the joint right back in a week. I was like, "All right, cool." Can we, we expect the Meek on this again? Yeah, Hopefully, I want to get him. I know Meek was on the tour, and he been, you know, what I'm saying things been a little hectic, but I'm gonna probably get him more. Okay. I'm gonna probably get him more. Okay. Okay. What can we expect from you coming next? Uh, I'm gonna do the uh, Still Unchained. Also with that, I got a documentary just talking about my life, answering a lot of the questions that people want to ask me all the time that I really try to stay away from. You know, just showing my, my uh, you know, my, my journey, you know what I mean? It's, it's been a ride, you know what I'm saying? It's probably going to bring a lot of people who probably heard of me and they really don't know, you know what I mean? You know, especially a younger audience, they probably can get a view like, okay, all right, well, I see why I do like yes, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. That's about it. And then, you know, I'm just trying to grow the brand on deck. Okay. And I'm just trying to, you know, and like at the end of the day, it's like, I, I feel as though I did a lot of things uh, in life strictly just based on using my talent. Now I, I really want to concentrate on doing some things using my brain. You know what I mean? I want to get in maybe some artist management, some consulting, doing some different things. You know, just, 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 I think I'm just, I'm, I'm putting myself in a box by just, trying to do things in my talent and not utilizing my experience in my brain to try to, you know, do some other things in life. I want to thank you for your time and I'm looking forward to Still Unchained. Yes, Still Unchained. I'm looking forward to Quilly Project. When is Quilly going to drop? We probably gonna do we probably gonna do Quilly three sometime this year too, and Ike from City. You know okay. what I mean? First one was Tina. This one gonna be Ike. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> That's cute. Okay, I'm looking forward to all the new. Interest that you guys got coming up. Yeah. If they want to get in contact with you, how do they follow you and reach you? I mean, everything's at the real Spado. D E R E A L Spado S P A D O. Instagram, Twitter, and that's my Gmail. The real Spado at Gmail. That's my Gmail. It don't go to nobody else. You want to reach out? Reach out. You got dope music. You got dope production. Send it through. You heard it first. Sue my viral exposure. Yo, it's your man Spado, Philly's Hope, aka Philly's Goat. You know I'm with my girl Chop, 215 Real Exposure, We're exposing you niggas. You shit, I'm just trying to make a couple mil, cut a couple deals, 
Pay a couple bills, they still hating on a pimp for no fucking reason. No fucking they locking reason. holes in the crib, must be cuffing season. Sucker. Scrolling down my timeline, must be sucker season. Uh -huh. Where I meet them at is right where the fuck I leave them. Right I'm a savage, zero fucks giving. Uh -huh. Come to my hood and I'ma show you how the fuck I'm living. I'm they living. like me more when my black ass was stuck in prison. Yep. To see a less than new edition, no Michael Bivens. Uh.